So now that we can capture keyboard input, we need to translate that into something that we can actually understand. But before we do that, we need to take some additional steps to remap the PIC chip. We've got it working for now because we've mapped 0 to 256 with our IDT entries all pointing to the same handler. But without remapping the PIC chip, we're actually been receiving exception 9 instead of keyboard interrupt 1, which is what we do not want. So we're going to io.cpp and we're going to define some constants. Define pick one command 0x 0x20 zero x, zero x define pick one data 0x21 define pick two command 0xA0 zero zero. define pick two data 0xA1 so pick one and pick two are the master and slave pick chips I'll put a link in description about pick chips if you'd like to read about it I'm not going to go into specifics in this video now to initialize the pick chips, we're going to need to define ICW1, which is initialization control word, init, which is 0x10. Now we need to define ICW1, ICW4, and this is 0x01. Now we need to define ICW4, 80, 86. And we define that as 0x01 as well. Right, now we'll create a function void remap pick. And now we can start remapping our pick chip. Now the first thing we need to do is create an unsigned char for a uint 8, a1 and a2. And these variables we're going to use to store the mask value of the pick chip so that we can return to it afterwards if we've already made a mask. So a1 equals in b pick1 data and a2 equals in b pick 2 data. Now we can do out b pick 1 command icw1 init or icw1 icw4 and this will tell the master pick chip to start the initialization sequence. Now we need to do the same with the slave pick chip and now it will be waiting for three additional commands. So we need to tell it the offset. So the offset of the master pick is 0 and the offset of the slave pick, so pick 2, is 8. Now we need to do pick 1 data 4 and pick 2 data 2. And then out be pick 1 data ICW4 8086 and the same with the pick 2. Now we just need to restore the saved masks of the pick chips. So we just do out be pick 1 data a1 and we do the same with the pick 2. Right now in idt.cpp we don't need to do all of this so we'll get rid of this get rid of this and we'll just map only number one in our idt and we'll call remap pick. Now I just forgot to include in this file type defs.cpp just so that we can use this unsigned int 8. So now we only have the rsr1 mapped to mapped in the IDT. So any other interrupt that gets called by the system will cause a crash. Now to be able to translate these scan codes we get from the keyboard into something useful we're going to need to create a lookup table. So we'll create keyboard scan code and we'll do scan code set 1. Keyboard scan code set 1. We can shorten this to KB if you'd like. .cpp and we need to do a const char scan code lookup table equals and then we can define it. Now I'll put a link in the description a page showing all of the characters that we can use for the scan codes but basically we just need to go through and map them manually. It's a very tedious process but luckily we only need to do it once. Well we need to do it once for each separate scan code set. There's up to four defined scan code sets so if you would like to support a large range of different keyboards you're going to have to do four different of these lookup tables. So for all of the special characters and the characters that don't exist, we'll just put a zero. And for the rest of them, we'll fill them in properly. So for the first two, 0x00 and 0x01, we'll put zeros. And then afterwards, we'll put one. And then we'll put two, so on and so forth. So as you can see here, I've mapped all of them up to space, which is 0x39. So now we can go back into our idt.cpp, and instead of printing the scan code, we can do uint8 
scan code equals nb 0x60 and then we can we can't use print string we need to create a print char function because we're not going to be passing in a string we'll be print passing in a single char so in our text print.cpp we'll create a void print char char chr and we'll just copy this uint8 color equals what we declared earlier and now we can do set cursor position cursor position plus one dereference vga memory plus cursor position times two equals char and copy this and vga memory plus cursor position times two plus one equals color so that'll print a single char onto the screen with our color format it's now back in idt.cpp we need to print char and we need to include this kb scan code set one so include kb scan code set one dot cpp and just so that we don't have clashes with different lookup tables we'll create a namespace so namespace uh, we'll make it kb set one so now back in idt.cpp we can print char kb set one two colons scan code lookup table and the index is our scan code so now we'll print that to the screen so let's see what that looks like and here we go so we we can type and a b c d e f g now as you can see we're getting a little bit of junk in between and that's because I only mapped up to 0x36 which was up to space. I haven't included anything afterwards. And that is because there is only a few special characters and then after that we are just repeating the same characters except instead of getting this code when it's pressed, we're getting this code when it's released. So we'll just do if scan code less than 0x39. Ah, we'll make this 3a just so that we can include the last one. So now we'll do this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And there you go. So now we can type. We can now type stuff. Now we don't have backspace support. Backspace support and all those special characters we need to implement ourselves manually. Uh, but you might notice when I'm typing it has a very slow refresh rate on the display. That's not because of our operating system. That's because of the box configuration. We can just go into display an interface and change this VGA update frequency to something like 30 and now that we do it we can see it in real time so that's much better that'll be it for this one in the next video we'll, we'll make some support for special characters but for now goodbye